My name is uh, Lucas Di Grassi. I'm Brazilian. I'm from Sao Paulo. And um, when I was a kid, when I was about nine years old, my great idol, Ayrton Senna, died. And since then, my dream was to become a racing driver. The thing I always wished when I went to bed at night, dreaming about racing, dreaming about becoming a champion in my sport. So I did. I worked very hard all the way up to Formula One. And um, I drove Formula One in 2010. In interesting, in 2010, I was driving Formula One with internal combustion engines, normal gasoline-based engines. Two years later, I was driving hybrid cars in the 24 hours of Le Mans. And two years later, two years, two years later, I was driving electric cars in Formula E. That was how quick the transition was in my career from internal combustion to electric. And um, I always thought about what would be the next step in motorsport. And I really wanted to be involved in that. And this is what we're going to talk about now. So I'm going to be talking about autonomous cars. The future will be about driverless autonomous technology. And why is that? And what, how and why autonomous technology has to do and will be integrated in motorsport? So 1.3 million people die every year on road accidents. 1.3 million worldwide. 90% of that is because of a human error. So either people not respecting the law, or they are drunk uh, and driving, or they're badly educated, or also the infrastructure is very poor. Of course, there is a huge road ahead to make roads safer. But I believe the really disruptive technology, the really disruptive way of making it better would be with autonomous technology. So why, what are the three vectors pushing for autonomous cars in the automotive industry? Low-cost sensors, so the sensors that measure reality, as we do with our eyes and with our feeling. In an autonomous car, those are cameras, those are, those are lidars or radars, those are GPSs, the same as you have on your phone. They are getting very cheap and they are getting produced in mass scale. High-speed connectivity, that means that the communication between cars, the communication between um, the infrastructure and the cars, the communication between other types of technology, they are increasing the amount of data collecting. And computing power. Computing power is going exponentially. Um, our current autonomous car is capable of doing crazy computing calculations. And, of course, everything is about the data collection. So the future of automation in general will be about data. Data collection, data processing, and autonomous systems using this data to improve in whatever area they are doing. And in our case, it's driving the vehicle. So autonomous cars, they are safer, for sure. They respect the law. They drive in the speed limit. Uh, they react much quicker than we do. So this is a way to push forward. They are greener. El autonomous cars, they will be electric. So um, why they will be electric? Electrification is already a process ongoing in the world right now. Electric cars are cheaper, easier to operate, and the cars will be electric. And after being electric, or together with this transformation, they will be also autonomous. But most important of all, there will be an economic pressure pushing autonomous car forward. Cars, autonomous cars will be much cheaper to operate. Why I'm saying this? I'm saying this because this is a clear indication of the automotive industry pushing towards the direction. So if the automotive industry, if the mobility industry doesn't go autonomous, they will go home. 
they will become obsolete. Will be the same as um, typewriters or other industries that went obsolete with the disruptive of technology. And this will be the case. So the cost of a, co a conventional taxi today, uh, that was a study made in the US, was roughly $3 per kilometer run. The cost of an autonomous electric car in the future, 10, 15 years from now, will be 43 cents. So it's a six time decrease in cost. So if the companies, they don't improve and they don't, they don't go towards autonomous technologies, they will go obsolete, especially because they will not be competitive anymore. So that's pushing the automotive industry to all in towards autonomous. This is a picture of a, a actual um, autonomous car that was introduced in Frankfurt last year. You can see there is no steering wheel. There is no pedals. The car doesn't have any human input when you're talking about level five autonomy. So what this has to do with motorsport? Motorsport has always been at the edge of technology development. The technologies were broadly developed in motorsport and then late, later adapted in commercial vehicles like ABS braking, turbocharge, many other technologies. What will happen to motorsport when the whole automotive industry are going towards autonomous technology? Is motorsport going to disappear? Is motorsport not going to be relevant anymore? I believe the it's time for a change and it's time to insert this technology into motorsport. This is the, a picture of 18, 1894, the first automotive car race. In that, that time, th those cars were called um, horseless carriage, which because of course, the, uh, they had the, the, the notion of a horse pushing the carriage and then when the horse was not, more, was not there anymore, they call it the horseless carriage. And, the, and these races, they build confidence in the public that the cars could go fast and it could be reliable. And also for the manufacturers, they were developing technologies and pushing these technologies into the commercial products. So in 2015, uh, a brilliant guy called Dennis Zverdlov, my mentor, decided to create and invest into a race series that would have autonomous technology in it. It was time to do that. And since December 2015, I've been involved in this project and I've been leading this project now for a year. We had a problem, of course, not only one, many. There was, there was not a car. There was nothing we could go and buy it and say, let's race it. Or there was no autonomous race car ever. So we built one from scratch. Actually, we built two. We built the first ever autonomous racing car, which we called the DevBot or development robot. And it was a hybrid of a car that a human could drive and teach the car, not drive the car, but teach the car on how to drive. And the car could drive by itself. And this is it. We have currently about 10 of those running, getting ready for the first race. And we built a second car, which was zero compromise. We built it from scratch with full autonomous capacities and it could only be driven by autonomous technology. You could not put a human inside. And we called this car the RoboCar. This car has four electric motors, 1,000 horsepower. It could reach speeds over 320 kilometers per hour, fully autonomous. So this is the, our family of the DevBot, which a human can drive and teach the machine on how to drive, and the RoboCar, which is purely driven by autonomous. Again. There is no one controlling the car when the car is, is, is driving. 
all the sensors, everything is making the decisions. So we believe we are truly disruptive in this matter, trying to put autonomous technology into motorsport, and we are creating the first sport ever that will combine the human and the artificial intelligence working together to achieve the best result. We really think this is uh, truly innovative and will be one way of inserting autonomous technologies, which are so important for the industry, into motorsport. And when we introduce these technologies into motorsport, we accelerate the development of these technologies. And by accelerating the development, you make it, you make it, you make it cheaper, you make it faster, you make it more reliable, you bring the future closer to reality. If we do that, we're going to save a lot of lives quicker on roads, and we're going to have a much better future. And that's why we're doing it. So where, where are we right now? I'm so this is an actual footage in April this year in Rome. The DevBot driving itself around the Formula E track of Rome. Let's enjoy it. Five hundred and fifty horsepower. It's not as quick as a professional driver yet, but in the future it will be. And another important feat, in July 2018, we took the Robocar and we did the first ever uphill climb in the UK with an autonomous car. It's a very famous event uh, south of London called Goodwood Festival of Speed. And uh, they allow us to put the car and the car drove there for the first time in autonomous mode. You can see the Robocar. And again, I want to really make it clear when this car is driving, there is no one controlling it. There is no pre-programmation. The, the, the car itself is making all the decisions. It's scanning the track in front of it. It's, it's turning, it's braking, it's making the decision of which speed it is going and how the car is going to behave. So this was uh, a truly, truly innovative and disruptive uh, event that we did in front of everyone, live. There was a huge risk involved. I was really, really uh, uh, worried that something could go wrong, but the car behaved in a beautiful way and completed the first ever uphill, um, ever. So, we want to be inspirational. We want to inspire new engineers, new coders, new computer scientists to come work with us. Our platform, on top of everything that we've done, is gonna have open source properties, it means everyone can come and aggregate value to it. It will be crowdsourcing, so parts of the systems could be used, crowd knowledge, so anywhere in the world could contribute to bring this future forward. And we gonna, um, we had to repack our strategy. We have to accelerate everything to start racing as soon as possible. So our, our strategy now, we are preparing for the first race, which will happen in spring 2019, so now, uh, with some teams racing an, uh, against other teams. And uh, we hope this will create even more excitement uh, and will create a better future for us all. Thank you very much.